Within the military industry, the transportation of weapons has always been one of the most interesting topics due to the logistical and operational complexity involved. This complexity often escalates when the cargoes are of extreme importance, delicacy and even destructive capability, which is why it is often necessary to resort to creating new, more suitable methods of transportation. While solutions tend to be highly effective when they are more sophisticated and innovative, many times they lean more towards creativity when it comes to solving problems practically. That's why, today, we'll delve into the story of when Kensworth developed a couple of trucks for transporting nuclear weapons. By the late 1940s and the early 1950s, the military potential of nuclear energy was on the rise. Although it was foreseen that the use of nuclear weapons would be the direction of future military developments, at that time bombers were very imprecise, and missile technology was still in its infancy, requiring a new solution for the deployment of these weapons of mass destruction. At the same time, the United States government desired that this new concept would have a tactical operation, meaning directly on the battlefield. So the simplest solution was to build a cannon capable of firing artillery projectiles equipped with nuclear warheads. Thus, in 1949, the project that would later be known as the M65 or Atomic Annie System began which consisted of a T-131 cannon adapted to fire projectiles weighing almost 400 kilograms with a caliber of 280 millimeters at a distance of up to 32 kilometers. To put the power of these warheads into context, each cartridge had a yield of 15 kilotons, which translates to each shot being capable of generating an explosion equivalent to up to 15,000 tons of TNT being only one kiloton less powerful than the bomb used on the Japanese city of Hiroshima. However, although all the technical issues of the weapon were already solved, there was still a problem to be solved that directly affected its need to be a tactical equipment, and that was its mobility. The issue was that this cannon was designed to be mounted on a loading platform that literally hung between two trucks, so it was necessary to resort to a somewhat peculiar solution. Although the company, Mac, had previously proposed a transporter that met these requirements, with the Mac T8 and T9 in the end, the government contract was won by the company Kenworth, launching a pair of trucks that would be known as the M249 and M250. Designed solely and exclusively for this specific purpose, they were equipped with a unique structure as well as everything necessary for both units to operate together. The first truck known as the M249 was built with two axles and all-wheel drive, featuring a hitch point located just behind the driver's cab and above the second axle, in order to be the front unit in assembly. Its propulsion was provided by a Continental AO895 six-cylinder gasoline engine with a displacement of 14.6 liters, generating a maximum power of 375 horsepower, coupled with a three-speed manual transmission Allison TX500. Meanwhile, the second truck in the assembly named the M250 was designed primarily to act as a pushing truck as the hitch point for the platform was placed just in front of the driver's cab. Additionally, the operator of this unit would only perform support tasks regarding maneuverability as control of the braking and power system, which is the same as that of the M249, was directly managed from the main truck. If you've reached this point in the video and enjoyed it, we would greatly appreciate it if you consider subscribing to the channel. Once the planning phase was completed, the Atomic Annie underwent a series of field tests to determine if it met the reliability and performance expectations of the United States government. Thus, on May 25, 1953, the M65 conducted its first and fortunately only nuclear artillery test at a test site in Nevada. As a result, the projectile successfully detonated 11 kilometers away from the test site, yielding a positive outcome for the project. Satisfied with the results, the military moved forward with a more serious production phase, manufacturing a total of 20 sets of trucks equipped with M65 cannons. Subsequently, these sets were deployed to various parts of the world to serve the army stationed in strategic positions. 
particularly those located in West Germany and the Japanese island of Okinawa. However, the arrival of these units in Europe only served to highlight the significant design disadvantages they faced. Their service in Germany made it clear that maneuvering a monstrous machine weighing 78 tons and measuring 26 meters in length along European roads was an extremely challenging task that required more than just driver coordination. Furthermore, although the maximum speed of this assembly was set at 40 km per hour, drivers were instructed not to exceed 15 km per hour, especially on curves. The reason behind this was multiple traffic accidents involving the cannon's instability when turning at higher speeds, with reports even suggesting instances where the entire assembly overturned. Additionally, another issue was its mediocre off-road capabilities, given the high cost of producing each unit, considering that their purpose was to be deployed in conflict zones. The total cost to produce each assembly amounted to around $7 million in today's currency. The final nail in the coffin for this project was the significant advancement and modernization of nuclear weapon delivery techniques just 10 years later. In 1963, the M65 cannons were already considered obsolete, accelerating the decision to withdraw them from the areas where they were deployed. Fortunately, it's still possible to see some of the models produced at the time in person, although most of the 20 units produced were scrapped. There are three complete sets displayed at the U.S. Army Artillery Museums in Maryland and Oklahoma, and one more at the National Museum of Nuclear Science and History in New Mexico. Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it and want more similar content, please subscribe to our channel. We also invite you to visit our secondary channel, Gear Unlimited, where you'll find a wide variety of topics. We appreciate your support and interest. Keep on trucking and stay tuned for more.